Hey, Sveria. And hello, Angus in London. Hello. <laughs> and hello, Chris, also in London. Hello. <laughs> we have just watched the first semifinal of Melody Festival in 2019. This was super exciting. We've got to kick it off by talking about the first qualifier, Queen Victoria, Angus. Um, I am so pleased about this. I think there was a lot of kind of doubts at the start of the week. The reaction to the snippet was not great. Country uh, is out the window and now it's a big power ballad and lots of concerns. Um, and all my doubts were dispelled tonight. I thought this was totally fantastic. She sounded great. I actually think the staging was really good as well. I got real shades of Santa Nielsen and Do from five years ago. It was that level of power ballad quality. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm totally thrilled for her. And now I think in hindsight, it's like, why was anyone ever doubting that she was going to do well? Yeah, I mean, it was really, really fantastic. In the end, like her vocal just killed it. And I think sometimes she's been a little breathy before because she had so much to do in some of these other performances. But just let her stand there and belt out that song. It was really, really beautiful, especially the second time round. I kind of felt like it didn't need the waterfall even. She just owned the stage. She was veering a little into maybe a bit too much movement at times. Like it was just a bit overperformed at moments, I kind of felt like. Um, but otherwise, like, no, really, really good. Definitely up there with, with her best Melfest entry. And I could see that in Tel Aviv 100%. I totally agree. This was her most passionate performance, and also it was the most passionate and emotional performance of the night. I came into this wanting it to be Anna, 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 because I loved the snippet of Anna's song, but there was no doubt when we saw all these performances, Victoria gave the most powerful performance. Vocally on point, she seemed a little nervous, like a little more emotional than in the past. Perhaps this means more to her now. The water effect is interesting. Um, you know, people talk about Ruth, Ruth Lorenzo. It's not a case of Chanel versus Walmart. It's a case of Chanel versus Chanel because they're both very nice. However, at times, I, I agree with you, Chris. I don't even know, and I guess I don't know if the water is necessary because she alone is good enough. And at times, from certain angles, it almost looked a little cheap, like there wasn't enough water from a certain mm -hmm. angle. And so they will figure that out for the final. And especially if she goes to Eurovision, I have no doubt. This was a classy, classy performance. She's matured so much as a performer and she was already very mature. This gave me the feels. She can relate to the message. She was emoting in a way that no one else emoted this evening. Yeah, I mean, fantastic stageography as well. Like she just, she did so well. This was very well deserved. Yeah, I mean, I saw a lot of people on social media who, who are like, I wasn't a fan of Victoria's other songs, but I really liked this one. So that's... Hmm. A plus it's nice to see her not having to do the country thing again and again and again and being typecast she's really shown that she can deliver and um, i'm looking forward to see what they do in the final with this well now we turn to mohambi hello we say hello to mohambi my first point is that that girl in the green she didn't look like her Tinder profile. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> when she popped out from that screen, I was like, who is this? But more seriously, I think this has the best hook of the evening, the hello, hello, hello. It just gets stuck in your head. Like you can't really forget it. I thought vocally, he was a little shaky. He, I, I was underwhelmed by the vocal. I liked the dancing. His trousers were emphasizing certain assets. Y'all can figure it out. Um, it was slightly distracting. I love this as a studio cut. As a live performance, it's not as powerful as Victoria, but I think it is deserving of a place in the final. Yeah, I mean, I think it's gonna be super interesting to see when the voting stats come out because my suspicion is actually that Mohambi may have been the winner tonight at the semi-final. Um, I agree, I think this was actually the best hook of the night. That's super catchy. He can't sing the falsetto notes, or at least tonight he certainly couldn't. He missed every single one in the performance. However, I think the whole song piece, the production, it has the Manzelma Love screens that we've all seen before, nice, smart, and clever. Um, that was all really great and well put together. You can tell, um, I think, relative to some of other tonight's performers, Mohambi has tons of experience. He knows what he's doing, he's an established star. I just think the falsetto needs either a lot of work or abandon those notes altogether because the problem with that is when you go for them and don't hit the notes, there's nowhere to hide and tonight there wasn't. However, fantastic hook, 
I suspect he's won the semi-finals tonight, and yeah, he's going direct to the final, which um, certain other acts who were expected to are not. So yeah, I thought this was really good, enjoyed it, but the falsetto was dreadful. No, it was just overall, it was terrible. I hate it. <laughs> Genuinely do not like this song at all. Do not like the performance, did not like his vocals, didn't like the staging. It was just all very, very poor and average. Like, you're an international star, and he hit, like, barely any of the notes. Um, it was a cheap-looking rip-off of Heroes, really. I just didn't... It was creepy, like, I didn't understand it. And, like, I hadn't heard any of the snippets. I'm, not, I'm trying to avoid the snippets this year, so I see it fresh on the Saturday night. And I'd heard so much hype for him during this week. And even before Melody Festival, and there was a lot of hype because it's Mohambi. You know, he was a big international star. Key point, he was a big international, st international star. This sounded dated like it came from about 10 years ago, which I'm assuming is when his majority of his songs came out. I don't really know. Um, but it just, no, this was not good. Like, I, that would get demolished at Eurovision. I'm sorry. Like, Lavender is much more hooky and catchier than that. So that's an immediate song that would beat it. Um, no, just really, really bad. And I do not understand, really, like, uh, there seems to be a lot of support for it as well on social media. And I just do not get it personally. Um, I thought there were at least five songs better than it tonight. Chris does not say hello. He says goodbye to Mo Hamdi. <laughs> and we move on to Andres Shanson, the first qualifier, Nano Chasing Rivers. Um, he, his voice sounded slightly off. I think it works with the song, which is again about vulnerability, perseverance, strength, overcoming. Um, the staging was very nice with the kids. Um, you couldn't take it to your vision, obviously, because, well, they're underage. <laughs> and also, you can't have 25 million people on a stage. Um, yeah, this... You know, I can take it or leave it for the final. It's not sufficiently strong that I think, oh, this has to make it to the final. It has to get through Andre Johnson. But I think it's a good performance, very respectable. He has a niche, he has a sound, and his fans will love this. Yeah, I mean, I uh, did not like his song in 2017, and I didn't like this even more. I just found, well, not actually didn't like, I just found it quite underwhelming. I think he has a lot of hype for being this big emotional performer. The song in 2017 was all like build, build, build to the big note and he delivered it. And tonight I agree, I felt he sounded like he needed a strepsil. He sounded quite hoarse and as if the power wasn't there. And I also don't understand with kind of the pedigree of songwriters that went into this. I mean, the Debs were in there. Thomas J. Song was in there. Lisa Cabell, Cabby, mm. Cabell, like Cabell. only teardrops woman. Um, it, these people have all written Eurovision winning songs and then what they come out with was something that didn't really have a hook for me it was very um like horizontal in terms of progression it didn't really go a lot of places um that being said he has a fantastic voice when he puts his mind to it so i think tonight maybe there was like a cough or something going on i understand the emotion piece. and also the staging i mean is smart because i think the thing with the kids is it's projection they're not actually on stage at the time mm -hmm. so it's like that would get around the rule with the children um but i mean staging and Nano himself aside, there wasn't a lot going for this. So I was, in a way, kind of surprised. I knew it wasn't going direct to the final when we heard it on the stage, but I was almost surprised it got into Andrew Shanson. I really liked it for about the first minute, and I liked the staging the entire way through, but it just, it was very, very flat. Um, it almost felt like he didn't want to be there. That was the impression I got just from his body language and also during like the, the results reveal, it just didn't feel like his heart was in it. And I don't know whether, you know, he was the overwhelming favorite kind of last time he went in and he won the televo, I think in 2017, like in the, in yeah. the final. Yeah, yeah. So obviously uh, then to then find yourself in a situation where he wasn't doing well in the audience polls and he wasn't getting all the hype, maybe that's affected him slightly. I don't know. You know, he's a man that very clearly is, in touch with his emotional side and, and he wears his heart on his sleeve. So maybe that was part of it. Um, no, I really enjoyed the staging. I thought that was probably the most powerful staging as an overall package of the night. Um, again, I don't know how they would make it work at Eurovision, but um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, and I would have, I, it was my Andra Shanson pick as well, I think. Um, yeah, but it was just kind of there in a way at points. Mm -hmm. And I'm certain 
whether it was just he was having an off night or what we'll see at Andrew Shanchen to elevate it. I almost want to stop watching the snippets or listening to the snippets because it always throws me off. Anna Bergendahl coming into this heat was, I was just living for it. I love that studio cut. It sounds so singer songwriter with a hint of Ireland. It's got a great message. She seems to feel it. She emotes. The staging was beautiful from what we saw on Instagram and then what we saw tonight. Love all that color. However, something just felt slightly off. Like it just needs to be tighter visually. At times I felt she was just standing there and going, woo, woo, I just shaved. <laughs> Because she has a great song, she's got a great look. There's a lot going on that I love, but then something was missing. And I think they can fix it and they can tighten it for the final. Um, and I hope they do, because this is a great studio cut. This is the song I would download. However, I preferred Victoria's overall performance. I prefer Anna's song, but the delivery, the emotion of Victoria was superior to this tonight. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think you hit the nail on the problem with this was that it was too static. That is a song that needs progression. I mean, like the first sort of 30 seconds, she has the dark, mysterious pillars. She's what, and I'm like, I forget the only line, but it's like, like a thief in the night. Da -da 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 -da. Like, there's lots of drama and power and pizzazz there, and it was all building quite well. And then you're right, she gets to the camera mark. It's like, camera mark, shot, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Camera mark, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Camera mark, that like, it just got too repetitive with the chorus and it didn't go anywhere, which is why this didn't go to the final tonight. However, I think get her out of the shrubbery and all the plants, like strip that away, give her some dramatic beats. I don't know, can they get her a treadmill and a wind machine? That's what this song needs. It's very Bonnie and Clyde, but you know, she's not shooting up the old saloon. She's just kind of waving at it and you need her to like, I don't know, get some petrol, light a match, lots of fire. It, this needed more for it um however i'm thrilled that she didn't get knocked out of the semi because i had a horrible thought when it came down to being her like in the last few bunch of people i was like oh god is she gonna get knocked out in the semi and like what an embarrassment so good that she's gone through the staging just needs more progression to it because it was too static tonight and she needs to there needs to be more for this i want more I think the best thing about it was the fact that she clearly had a bit of confidence and she was owning the stage and she really, like she was feeling it. And that was what was missing ultimately at Eurovision for this is my life. You know, she looked scared the entire time there. Whereas this was a confident woman and I loved that. The only problem was she was a confident woman singing in some random part of the garden center. Like mm. <laughs> it was just like, just e and Q and <laughs> Just really, really unfortunate. Like the opening, I agree a hundred percent. Opening really nice. Then she was just in some shrubbery, and it was like there wasn't enough of it, or the camera was too far out. Um, and then they had the camera effect with like the fireflies, but even that looked a little cheap, really. Like for Melody Festival, and, and considering some of the production for High Fifteen, like that was very, very well produced. Unfortunately for them, the song was awful. Um, and we'll get to that, but Anna, yeah, I, I hope that they really work on the staging or the camera or something because I, I want her to do well. I want the Bergen Demption, but I worry that this might be an Andra Shanson dropout at the moment. Mm. My man has told me I have three minutes to finish because we have to eat dinner. So let's quickly give our final thoughts on the final three acts. I will start high 15. They are not Little Mix, they are not Fifth Harmony. The song was just dull. Great production, great kind of visuals, messy outfits, but it was just boring. There's, I, I wouldn't want to hum that or listen to that ever again. Aria, she looked like she had just woken up. She loved her bed so much, she took her sheets with her to the stage. And the other act is Xena. I really, really enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. I hope they come back. It's got the fun of a Sean Banan, but it's not a joke. Yeah, I mean, I actually, um, on uh, Xander, I just have on my notes, orange party song, because that's what I took away. I actually thought this was quite good. I enjoyed it and was sort of surprised they weren't going through. So clearly 
Sweden was erring on the side of taste tonight, which is fantastic. High 15, I have to disagree. I actually felt that they really upstaged Nano because they actually had some stage presence and energy after that song. They came on, it was an explosion of colour. The chorus of the song was annoying, but I actually think the rest of it was quite good. So maybe something there for them to come back to, but Love Generation 2.0, perhaps this is not. Um, and Aya, gosh, she really put me in mind of um, Lisa Simpson as the Lizard Queen from The Simpsons. Uh, <laughs> like all this like wafting around in the caftan. I mean, fantastic caftan work, windography. I also thought she, to that point, um, had made the best use of the stage. I think tonight a lot of the elements in that very big stage with a lot going on weren't done well and she'd done a lot with it but sadly um here we are fourth year on of tired ass showgirl in first semi-final finishes in last place who's surprised anymore i mean charlotte pirelli yeah. kiki danielson uh, yeah. the list goes on the list goes on there's always one um so v sad thought she deserved better fantastic caftan um, high 15, terrible, didn't understand it. Then yeah. like 15 and 16 and talking about going out, getting drunk. Pretty certain that that isn't possible in Sweden at those ages. I mean, maybe it is, but it's... Or at that expense, really. Yeah, it <laughs> sounded like it was written for, like, for a little mix who are obviously older, you know, they're still young, but they're older and it, it would make sense for them. Didn't understand it. Thought the staging was recycled Benjamin and Grosso bits. Um, Arya, justice for Arya. I thought it was really, really sweet. Would have loved to see her in Andra Shanson um, and definitely ahead of Mahombi. And uh, Zena and the guy, I really liked that. Thought it was really fun. Would have happily seen that again at Andra Shanson as well. Um, yeah, I felt like for the most part, Sweden got the results kind of right. But yeah, there was a couple. I mean, there was one very obvious one for me that was just completely out of place. But um, yeah, I mean, definitely by far and away so much better than Melfest last year. Like, hallelujah, Melfest is back. The entire production just felt on point again. So good job, Sweden. Looking forward to what's coming next. Amen, hallelujah. Linda Woodruff as Nella Barzili, love you. That's uh, what uh, we think. What do you think? Let us know who you think should have won here on Weebly Vlogs. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our videos that are upcoming. And even if you weren't watching live, you can still leave a comment. You can comment on the website and uh, let us know all your thoughts. And just so you know, this video is going to save. So if you're watching live, just wait a few minutes. It'll go live so you can see what part you missed from the beginning. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.